we love to watch movies, why we love to read books, why we love to watch television, it's because the stories that they tell us. And the need for story seems to be something that goes all the way back to our ancient ancestors who painted pictures on caves at Lascaux and Altamira and Font de Gam. That need for story is what has made our history, because history itself is really just a compilation of all the stories of all the people who ever lived. Yet when I go into a school to do a presentation and I ask kids what history is about, they automatically tell me that it's boring names and dates and facts. Why is that? What have we lost that kids don't like history? I think the thing we've lost is that sense of story. So how do we get them to like history? I think that the trick is that we get them to understand that they are part of history, that their families are part of history, and that we do that by starting with their stories, the stories of their families, and how those will eventually fit into that bigger picture of what we call history. This is what led me to, read, to write a new book, a companion book to my book, Roots for Kids. Uh, this one is called Finding Your Family Stories, and this just came out, and it has a detailed program for how to get started on what I call the genealogy of story. When I go into a school, I begin all my presentations for the kids by showing them a very small toy from my childhood. It's something that was given to me by my grandmother. And I tell them the story of this item, and I tell them how that item brings my grandmother back to life for me, that I can see her, I can remember her when I, when I use this one item. Then I ask them to share items that they have brought in with them. It's often something from their very, very early childhood, a blanket that they slept with, a teddy bear. And they have to tell me who gave them that item and why it means something to them. Would they give it up? Uh, is it something that they would want to keep forever? And we talk about the fact that that story of that item of their childhood is part of their history. And then we speculate, maybe their parents have stories like this, and their grandparents. And so we send them home with the idea that they are going to ask their parents, do they have some special toy that was very, very important to them? And the same with their grandparents. And then by this time, we'll probably have accumulated a half dozen stories that they can, that they can keep forever. We go from there into different other aspects of storytelling in families. What foods were important in the family? Where did they go on vacation? Where did they live? Were they city people? Were they country people who then moved to the city? Where did their ancestors come from? Did they come in through Ellis Island? Did they arrive on the Mayflower? There are all sorts of different stories and each family has its own unique ones. And the kids are always accumulating all these stories as they ask questions and as they, and as they find new, new and more stories about their family, they also see how their family connects with the bigger history that we call history. So we are using genealogy, not as a genealogy of names and dates, but a genealogy of stories. And that is what we, our attempt is to make kids be more successful at understanding where they belong in the world, in their family, and in history as a, as, a greater, uh, as a greater concept. So I hope that you will have fun finding your family's stories through your children.